All right, here we go. This is the Greyhawk channel, and you are getting ready to watch City of the Gods here. Um, running through the uh, the Blackmore setting, uh, we're excited to be here. Uh, let me. Uh, you'll notice there is some amazing uh, character info that can now be displayed of our wonderful players, and uh, an amazing individual went ahead and designed it. Uh, they oh I forgot to fix the cameras beforehand so I'll do that too here in just a second. Um, so yeah we you'll you'll see it scroll through so that you can see some of the various uh, attributes uh, stats and information on the characters and in some cases their companions. Uh, while I fix the cameras, I'll go ahead and let the players uh, introduce themselves. Uh, so Eris, why don't you go ahead and start there? Hello, I am Eris Savad. Um, I am a hula hooping seamstress, but today I am playing Talia Kiaquin. Um, she is a uh, essentially the equivalent of a high elf arcane um, historian wizard. Um, she uses a lot of energy magic uh, in the form of basically ribbons of sunlight to uh, perform a variety of tasks, um, but she's really interested in arcane symbols and the history behind uh, the magic. She's really excited to be here too. And then we have uh, Laika Time Bust. Hi, name's uh, Lyle Laika. Uh, I'm playing Luthka, the orc, sort of druid, barbarian, ranger combo, who uh, got into this mess because uh, she was very angry about uh, someone stepping in some fungus. And then we have Casey with Roach. That was me. I stepped in fungus. Uh, I'm Casey. I'm playing Roach, the Necro Ninja, who is a sad clown. That's that's an interesting description. Um, and then we've got uh, Derek. Hi everyone, I am Derek Sword. Uh, I am playing uh, Orion, the uh, Golden Dragonborn uh, protective paladin. Uh, he is uh, Dragonborn that is in service to uh, Talia's family and is sworn to serve and protect her primarily. Um, he traveled back in time and now is with this ragtag bunch as they try to find a city and some gods. It is very true. Uh, and I am Great Mustache. I am the wonderful DM for this uh, show and Awesome Players. And I will be helping take you through this world. Uh, so I'm going to start off with our sponsors and our supporters, of course which I actually made uh, some slides to help show off uh, that information to everybody. So, uh, yeah, the Greyhawk channel, special thanks to all of our supporters, specifically our Patreon supporters and our Twitch subscribers. You are the ones that allow all of this to happen. Uh, and uh, you can check out the Patreon over at patreon.com, the Greyhawk channel. Uh, and there are like somewhere around 18 or 20 different shows every week. Uh, that are going on for the Greyhawk channel. So lots of uh, Greyhawk goodness going on there. So it's, uh, and of course, make sure to visit our Discord where you get a special thing, but I'll mention that a little bit more. Uh, Roll20 is a supporter of us. They are the leading virtual tabletop. And so we're officially supported by them. And if you're interested, uh, the roles that you see directly below me and uh, the map that you'll see in the area soon. That's all Roll20 that we use to help automate and speed things up and uh, get some visuals, even though we're playing uh, almost half a world away for some of us from each other. So uh, Roll20 is pretty awesome. Uh, then, of course, we have some sponsors, our heroic maps, uh, some of the backgrounds, uh, the battle map areas and stuff that you'll be seeing today. Well, We'll see if you'll be seeing them today. Depends on what the players do. But uh, we're actually using some of Heroic maps. They have like over 300 maps over at Drive Through RPG. That's a really long link, but if you just search for Heroic maps on Drive Through RPG, uh, you'll be able to find all of their amazing stuff. They've got 
tons of stuff in different uh, categories, uh, sci-fi, fantasy, all that sort of stuff that you can find. Um, tabletop loop, loop, I did it again. I think I did that last week. Tabletop loot <laughs> has awesome dice and accessories. Uh, when you're purchasing dice from them, if you enter in Greyhawk in the coupon code box at checkout, you can get 15% off your dice order at tabletoploot.com. Uh, Rue Inc. is awesome as well. She does a lot of cartography, maps, and illustrations, so you can get a bunch of cool banners and little little iconic... Yeah, there's there's one of them that her... the uh, Is that a squid or an octopus? I don't remember. Uh, this one's the Kraken. I actually Kraken. made a, a line of dice trays with that design in the middle. Oh, nice. And I also have that one, which is one of her compass, uh, compass roses. Yeah. And I, I made a dice tray of that too. Um, but when I ordered the fabric, they came out super duper big. So now I have banners. <laughs> Well, very cool. Yeah, so she has lots of cool stuff. Um, I've used some of her maps in some of my games, actually. Uh, and she provides the black and white versions of uh, nearly all her maps for free. And then you can get colored ones and other stuff uh, over there. Plus, she has a cartography course, so you can go over to ruink.com. And for those of you that are patron supporters and Twitch subscribers, there's the private section of our Discord uh, that you can access discount codes to Ruink, as well as Cantrip Candles, who have 100% soy wax candles with a great selection of scents, uh, which uh, I've certainly enjoyed, and which you can see three of them uh, right over there with uh, with Casey. So awesome candles, very good quality, um, and uh, they do some cool stuff where they like put a, put a dice in some of them or something, if I remember. So there's a lot of cool cool stuff there. Uh, and then, of course, you're free to join the discussion over at the Discord for the Greyhawk channel. Uh, there's the link right there. It's uh, So if you type that in to your browser, it'll let you get the invite link to the Discord server. And thanks to the God Brother who is now following. Uh, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's our sponsors and supporters. So thank you to all of them. And, yeah, we'll go ahead and jump in uh, with somebody who would like to describe what even happened last time. What even happened? I, I will give it a shot. Okay. I, I, I meant to prepare something, but I, I forgot. Um, all right. So last time our story picked up just after the Sand People fight, correct? Uh, the, oh, the, the sand, the, th the constructs made out of sand. Right. Yes. Yes. So our story began, uh, just after a fight in our last game, um, inspecting our enemies. We had a, uh, brief run in with some questionable magic and, uh, nearly lost Talia, um, six feet under, but, um, we're able to, to get her back under no, no fault of her own. Um, <laughs> Continuing to explore through the desert by night, uh, we discovered that uh, we were actually likely being followed. Um, so we have decided to continue our pace, but to be a little more cautious as we move along. Uh, we have successfully uh, missed the red dragon, although who knows if, if that luck is going to hold out. And uh, also encountered a uh, rock last time who we uh, severely abused before finally letting it uh, fly away. <laughs> One could say we rocked him. We, we did. We All right, rocked uh, his world. See, I think there's two red dragons now. Let me... Oh, they're just they're multiplying game by game. That's great. Did I miss anything? Uh, yeah, that's that's a lot of stuff. Uh, there was a bit of difficulty in travel for some individuals. That's uh, right. The yeah. the cold of traveling at night in a desert, uh, as well as the sand blasting in the face, uh, as it was it was quite windy uh, that day. So uh, that was going on. I think uh, we still have Luthka in Al form flying overhead as well. If I recall correctly, yes. Okay. 
So you guys had managed to rest in between um, Orion and Brother Richard. You were able to uh, restore individuals so that they did not have that uh, that exhaustion or that fatigue going on for them. So presently, no one is suffering uh, from it, though I think... Uh, no, yeah, so they got uh, Glamis and Talia and... Interestingly enough, we had Roach uh, have a special type of fatigue affect her because of pushing herself to her limits that occurred during the session, uh, which also caused her jaw to fall off to the ground. Uh, but she was able to do quite a bit of fearfulness to the rock as a result. So it ended up helping out. So yeah, that's where we kind of left off with the group. You guys had had finished that encounter with the rock and had kind of uh, rested up and been able to locate another place to rest, as I recall. Though I could be recalling that wrong. It might just be too nice to you. Uh, yeah, restoration happened, fortitude. Yeah, so you guys traveled a little bit afterwards uh, and were just in the process of setting up camp. Uh so, uh, yeah, you had the people that had been potentially following you or tracking you before uh, that you were somewhat aware of. Your travel had slowed down because of, uh, again, the, the weather. So instead of making uh, two uh, hexes like you've been hoping to, you only managed to kind of get through one hex. So what is everybody doing while you're setting up uh, setting up this camp? Um, I'm going to go ahead and investigate to make sure that um, the, the people that are following us aren't catching up. Okay. Because that, that would be a very good idea. All right. So how are you going about that? Um, well, I'm just going to kind of look behind us, go up a bit on a ridge or something, see okay. if I can get a really good view of the area. Um, and uh, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and look around and, and try to take note of anything else that looks odd. Um, maybe somewhere where a red dragon might be living. Sure. So yeah, go ahead and do a perception check as you're kind of trying to see. There's... Uh, there's quite a bit of wind still tossing around, so sand's kind of flying around. It's making it a little bit, a little bit more difficult to to see with uh, with just your bare eyes. I want to talk to the the, the Baron and, and Brother Richard. Um, I, I want to ask him: uh, do, do you know we all are being followed? We, we know that. Do you know? that might be any thoughts suggestions well it uh, very well could be some of the soldiers of the frogs it could be some of the sand folk uh, those are are probably the two most likely possibilities right now it, it could just be some uh, random writers as well perhaps uh, coming through but I should be able to speak with them if that's the case but it wouldn't be anybody, any any friends of yours necessarily. That means more than likely bad news. More than likely bad news, I would think. Yes, we should okay. definitely be keeping a good eye on them. And uh, if Talia wants to go ahead and roll the perception yeah. roll, is it um, I'm, not cooperating? No, I was waiting for you guys to stop talking. I'm going to okay. use a legend point to give myself oh. advantage. All right. <laughs> I'm glad cool. I did that. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Because I want to try to pass this at least a little bit, I'm going to use my observant perk. Okay. So, yeah, you're, you're not noticing anything at first. So we see, you know, Talia's kind of crept up on a little bit higher dune rise uh, in the desert and, and sand's going and, and we see her kind of focus and, and wipe the sand out and then look. And you're actually able to spot them. Uh, before you had maybe seen them through the the snoopers, uh, but now you can see them without them. So they're definitely gaining on you. Uh, they're making a little bit faster progress, it seems. Uh, it's a little bit hard to tell the distance, and they're probably suffering from having to travel as well. So, uh, but 
you you've got a general bearing on them and where they are and they're definitely closer excuse me everyone it, it appears that um the people following us are getting a little bit closer now i i don't know how fast we should go to try to lose them i i don't think we're gonna lose them at this point you make out how many there are could i Probably. um um you're guessing there's probably like three more more than three for sure it's it's kind of hard for the distance and the sand but uh it definitely seems to be a group it's it's kind of hard to make out but uh, like there there's definitely a group probably most likely as many as us ish um maybe a little bit less but there's definitely more than a couple do you think it could be anybody else from our campsite? Maybe I, you could uh, you, you could use the the peepers to uh, to look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No. Try. Yeah. Give it a shot. Yeah, since you know the direction to look at specifically uh, that she can point it out to you, uh, you can go ahead and have additional advantage to the roll. Well, thanks. All right, yeah, twenty six. So you're you're looking through the peepers. You you enhance and you enhance again, and it it does that weird clicking and whirring. And then yeah, you you can see and there's a group. It seems that they have horses. Um, they're also wearing really strange, um, really strange armor. Uh, it's a very, very smooth looking armor, even from this distance, you can tell, and it's uh, covering their whole body. Uh, it's a little, little oddly shaped, uh, but it's that that's why you recognize it. It's just, it's very shiny, even in, in the desert as, as the sun is rising here for you guys. Uh, you can see it gleaming off of it. It actually, with a 26, it reminds you a little bit of the silver egg, to an extent. They're weirdos. <laughs> I don't know what else to call them. Gods? Well, realistically, we're all a little strange, aren't we? Especially because we're from a completely different time and we're not actually supposed to be here. So, you know, the fact that we're here, I mean, look at yourself, you're a little weird. But, you know, I, I don't want to have a problem with you, but it's just, that's that's the truth of it. Well, thank you for your honesty. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean, though, right? These are not, like... They're not. They're wearing armor, but it's not right armor. What well, could you uh, maybe describe that a little more? It's shiny, in the desert. Shiny like like knights, like the egg. Oh, it must be people from the city of the gods or wherever the egg came from. Uh, the Baron kind of thinks for a moment. Is there anything else with them? Is it just? Are they walking? What is? They're on mounts. It could be soldiers of the frog. Especially if they're this far out from the city of the gods. Are they known? Are they known to have god equipment? Uh, they have been, yes. In the, in the past, they have been spotted and been using some of this equipment. They get their hands on it. They must have been in, in league with the city of the gods, or they they kill a lot of them and and destroy it and take their armor. We we believe they may have at various times uh, raided the city of gods potentially, or uh, otherwise stolen some of the technology. Well, if they can do it, we can too. It's true. That That's uh, we're, we are hoping to gather some of the items in the city of the god does it look like they can see us back from here like is there nothing between us and them 
Well, there's flying sand and stuff. Uh, and and you, most of the group is kind of down below a dune area, and you've kind of risen on top. So they might be able to see you when you were staring at them. Um, you didn't notice any snoopers on them, uh, at least at that moment in time when you were looking. Uh, you're guessing they might arrive if if they're moving fast on their horses they could probably reach you in depending on the sand and the wind you know six to eight hours maybe ten so if we rest they're going to get to us anyway well if we rest we can set up a trap for them that was my thought them when they set get up an here. ambush We know they're coming. They don't know that we know they're coming. And that'll give us the advantage. And we'll also have a lot of time to rest up and get well and and and, and make some sort of uh, a trap for them. Probably something that they're not going to be expecting. What could we do? Oh, we're from 3,000 years in the future. We should have something that they don't have now. Uh... Brian's got something. Modern medicine. <laughs> I've got a wand of sunflame I've been meaning to try out. Ooh, we could back off a little bit and just pop that in the middle. Um, but it, we, we wouldn't want to destroy the horses because the horses could help us uh, move a little faster. And uh, when, when we're... Yeah, and I, I, think, I think the bulk would probably get mad at me if I shot a horse. Well, let me uh, move you over to the area you presently are in so that you could maybe plan and set up. This, this wonderful map background from Heroic Maps. But yeah, so you've got a, a rough area. That I've, I've marked off two, two dunes. On the bottom right area, it's about a 15-foot rise up. And on the top left, there's about a 40 feet. Uh, so it's a little bit of a steeper incline um, up to the top. So you've got, uh, you've got a few rocks sticking out around and uh, some different elevations. Uh, that you can plan around and they're coming from the east right yeah they'd um technically they'd be coming from the south southeast ish yeah so uh they would probably either come across this dune or up this way depending on if they went around the dune but uh they'd be coming somewhere from this direction So maybe we do something to get them off their horses, like uh, make something look all suspicious in the middle of that valley. And then one of them will get off the horse, and then we pop up from behind them, steal their horses, push them off the horses, steal the horses, and then ride off. Something suspicious like a loose hand? Or... Uh, like one of those glyph traps, if you still have the pieces. Mm -hmm. um, well, I don't think it's... I didn't take any, did I? Well, if you can replicate the writing. That yeah, would it wasn't so much that there were pieces, it was the remnants of the magic that was uh, still kind of in uh, some of the sand. Uh, and you had, because I, I, and you had asked about this actually, so I mentioned that you could probably reproduce it, but because it's not something that you're well practiced in, the actual effect that might happen could be what you wanted or maybe something different. Yeah, uh, I imagine it would also take uh, quite a bit of time to actually do. Um, no, I, I don't think that I can I can do that. But um, I can use my magic to set other traps. But, you know, I, what if I just stood there in the middle and everybody else hid? Then nobody would need to get off their horse and they would just kill you from where they sat. Well, I don't know about that. It's a big risk. Real big. Roach, could you maybe go 
invisible and try pushing them off their horses? Uh, or would that be I'm too big a risk for you? I'm not that strong, to be honest with you. I use mm. feed mostly. Uh, I was suggesting riding because if it's small enough, they'd have to get off of their horses in order to look at the riding. It's not that it needs to do anything. It's just that they need to bend over. So That's we can kick him in the ass. <laughs> well, um, mm. Excuse me, Al, do you have any ideas? Boots. Says the owl. Yeah, the lar large owl is uh, still circling around, I guess, the area, or are you, are you landed on Glamis, or? Uh, I th think that the, that Luska is keeping some, what, high ground, so like maybe a rock, perched on a rock or something. Okay. If we don't want to use any individual as bait, we could all just hide behind a patch of rocks and all jump out together. Well, I'm not sure if we'd all want to hide in the same place. What if they don't go past that place? It, I, this is I, a big area. That, I'll, I'll leave a part of myself out if we need something to hold them here. Uh, as far as hiding goes, I had an idea, but I'm not entirely sure if I have enough time for this. Uh, and that is, I... Uh... Okay, uh, past is past, right? History is history, we can all agree on that. Like, doesn't matter where we came from, it matters who we are now today, right? That's... Can we agree on that? Uh, Luz got peers at you. Brother Richard raises an eyebrow. No, we can't, I guess. Well, just, if you're just thinking about the theory, actually, um, where you came from is a big part of who you are today, but it actually is our reactions to the experiences rather than the experiences themselves that make us who we are um, and the lessons that we learned and the actions that we um, are, are right now um, really is the thing that that um, matters technically, but the, the things that we did before do inform what we do now and who we are now. I'm staring at Brother Richard and I'll just say, all right, well, let's just say that I used to do digging, right? <laughs> digging was a large part of what I was created for. Uh, I may be able to make individual holes for us, and what we do is we make a tiny little hole we can breathe out of, and then we're underground. Yes, but we can't all get out from being underground. No, it wouldn't be. You you would be able to. It would be loose ground. Uh, the Baron kind of nods his head. He says, yes, uh, I've, I've known of similar traps in the past. Animals do that all the time. Like a trapdoor spider. What am I talking about? I have wings. We'll be fine. Though, do remember, you don't want to fly too high as if you're spotted in the air by City of the Gods, they might send out those constructs we faced uh, back at Binbo's Hectar. Oh, I know, but it, it'll help me get out of the ground. I'm not very strong. I can't really climb up very well. No, you're, you're literally only going to be covered by maybe like five inches of dirt. Yeah, no, it's just getting out of the hole itself. Like, pulling myself up. You're, you're going to be vertical on, or horizontal on your back. With laying um, down. With a little bit of dirt on top of you. What if we get trampled? Uh, that's, that's why you pick where you, where you, where you hide real well. Uh, like, behind each and every one of those rocks would be a good spot. Okay. 
I'll pop off my hand and start to prep. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with the whole digging plan. I think that's... All right, so I guess mm, put your token... And, of course, you're hearing all this, uh, Luthka, in your owl form, so you can respond however you want. But put your tokens, I guess, where you want to be buried at. Don't worry, I've done this before! Uh, and, yeah, so you've got the, the whole range uh, that you can be... Uh, the the area that you're in right now is lower ground, so there's less wind right here. So it's a little bit, which is why you had picked it originally, thinking about setting up camp uh, between some of the rocks and the little bit of a valley here. It would make it a better resting spot during the day. Um, and I just have your Luthka token out for the turn tracker. Uh, so I have it in the top left of the screen there. Are you going to be buried as an owl? Uh, nah, nah, probably not. It's... Okay, are you going to be Luthka or another form? Uh, yeah, I'll go back to Luthka form. Okay, I'll just toss that out. All right. Um, Did you change because <laughs> you've been you've been uh, in various animals this whole time, right? No, he was uh, Luthka was Luthka for part of the journey because when you fought yeah. the sand the sand constructs, she uh, turned into an owl. That or no, the rock is when she turned into an owl. Gotcha, gotcha. To pick out the owl's eyes in a vengeful fit for attacking Glumus. Were you worried that there were uh, anamorphs rules at play? All right, so Brother Richard, I guess, will go over behind this rock to be to to. Hide. Uh, I think he'll go there. Uh, where did you, did you want to just be right there, Orion? Yeah. Remember, what's the the range for the the wand of sunflame? Oh, it's pretty far. Um, let's see. Yeah, I guess I didn't put it on there, did I? Um, we'll say it's a. Uh, Hundred and twenty-five, two fifty. It's two hundred and fifty feet, but you. No, we'll do the one twenty-five, so you don't have the restriction of it being close. Because I'd love for you to shoot it right at your foot. <laughs> so you've got one hundred and twenty-five feet. Okay. Uh, range. Now you can uh, extend that range. You can double it for a disadvantage. Right, so you can go up between 125 and 250 feet for disadvantage one. So it's got yeah, it's got a good range. Maybe right there. All right, uh, where did you want uh, Glamis? Right, yeah. Um, guess nearby here. Okay. All right. So, Roach, you are burying all of them, right? Yep. Okay. Then I guess let's have you roll for that bearing so we can see how well they are hidden. Okay. Um, I guess you're using your alteration to do this. I am. Uh, but... You could potentially use your agility because after you bury them, you could like smooth it over and stuff. So I'll give you the choice of which one you want to use for that. I think oh, both make you. sense. All right. Yeah, we'll go with the 2d8 with the agilities. Probably wise. Uh oh. Then I'll take. I don't see anything yet. 
Did it do the pop up for you or did the pop up to hide? Uh, it did everything it should. It's just roll 20 is not responding very well. Okay. It I'll just roll it manually. Like you. Nope, still nothing. Yeah, there's. I just did a roll too, and it's. Uh, so typing works, but for some reason. Uh, it's probably because it's having to connect to the randomizer for the rolling. Except that worked. That's weird. <laughs> Let's do a refresh. See if that does anything. Yay, technology! Oh, wow. <laughs> what? Uh, I can't get back into roll 20 now. Oh, don't reload! <laughs> Oh no. I bet Roll20 is uh, experiencing a hiccup. Time to get out the uh, acoustic dice. Yep. I've got, I've got some dice I can pull out. Yeah. Yeah, it's not reloading at all for me now. Oh, wait. I just saw my N NPC roll happen while it's still trying to reload the page. That's good, at least. I'll let you grab some dice. Acoustic dice. <laughs> Acoustic, yeah. Yeah, if you have some real dice, you can just roll those in instead. Okie dokie, be right back. Just need you all to see what my cat is doing right now. <laughs> Excuse me, this is... Since you're having technical difficulties... I'm going to share my cat's adorableness because he is curled up like a baby in my arms. Cats are fun. Oh, hey, whoa, there he goes trying to do something. Da, 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 da. <clears throat> we'll get to maybe use theater of the mind a little bit. <laughs> That's cool, uh, squid-looking thing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's like, uh, something to hang stuff off of, like, uh, keychains and stuff. Yeah, so for Philo Bear, uh, in chat, the, the way it works is a D20 system, so it works a lot similarly to D&D &D in that regards, but instead of, uh, you know, the plus one, plus two, depending on your attribute scores, uh, it uses dice. And all dice explode, so if you get the maximum on your dice, so on a D6, if you get a six, you get to roll it again and continue to add. So that's how criticals work, is it adds it higher. Um, and then instead of damage dice, uh, how much you exceed a target's defense is how much damage you deal to them. Uh, so yeah, while Roll20 is figuring itself out, uh, we'll just... Uh, does everybody have some dice of some sort they can roll? Oh, I got dice. I actually oh, have a shoebox filled with tabletop loot dice right next to me. All right, I just reloaded into uh, Roll20. I don't know how other people are. Did you guys ever reload? Are you still just in it? I'm just in it. I'm afraid to do anything. Yeah, I'm just in it. Let me see about a roll here. It's still giving me a 502 bad gateway. But I got a 17 on that roll. Oh, it showed you your roll finally? No, I... Oh, okay. Uh, so you got a... 17 total. 17 total. It let me roll. Oh, yeah, there's your roll. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why didn't it do my roll? It doesn't like you. I don't I know. Guess. Apparently, I'm just having a good tech day. All right, so that was a 17 for uh, the overall hiding of everybody, right? Uh-huh. It looks like if you type the roll, it does that fine, but it looks like its interface with the character sheet is lagging a little bit uh, for whatever reason. So, we'll, oh, uh, yeah. we'll get it figured out. Oh, I see your... Yeah, because your... my... Yeah, I, I can do a regular roll, but yeah, I just tried clicking on something on my character sheet, and... Oh, well. 
Oh, there's my NPCs. But see, I well, no, I saw Eris's energy roll. I saw the yeah, pictures of the cat on Twitter. You. Nice. Thank you. I'm gonna try to reload. Yeah. Like, um, just... All right. So yeah, you guys get get buried, and I guess there's just a, a hole for the like nose and mouth opening, or for breathing. So yeah, that's the plan. You've seen the uh, uh, stuff in pop culture where the ninja hides in the pond with yeah, a bamboo usually straw. A, a straw. That's what we're doing. Yeah. yeah. Except I don't think you have any straws, but. I get that idea. We've got like paper and stuff and junk and yeah, you you get something to work. So you, you know, you feel you guys. Hopefully, uh, nobody has claustrophobia. But yeah, you're you're buried. You feel the weight of the sand on top of you. It's not too oppressive that you feel you can probably get up uh, fairly easily um, out of it. Does anybody who has a might score of zero actually? So two two of you have a might score of zero. Okay, we'll see. I, I might make you roll your might to see how quickly you get out of the sand, because uh, it might take oh you a little boy. bit longer. Um. All right. So, well, okay. Here's another question because we you you guesstimated that these people following tracking you um, are anywhere from six to ten hours out. So how how soon do you bury? Oh, versus like, how long are you gonna wait? We'll probably do this after we've like rested and recouped, and you know, uh, we're not going to be sitting here buried for eight hours. Talia won't have that. I mean, it could be a restful sleep. No, you could sleep like the dead. <laughs> I was waiting for that. Um. Uh, rolling around in your sleep or anything. Yeah, so you guys uh, can set up watch so that you can keep an eye on the uh, as they're approaching and when they're getting closer you can you know, uh, do the berry thing. So uh, let's get three people who want to be watching out for the people as they get closer. Oh, uh, another thing Talia would have uh made sure to do is to make tracks like we packed up and left okay um, so that it looks like we're gone it didn't like all the tracks just stop here that does remind me you guys do have one mule with you who is carrying a lot of your stuff bury the mule no, I don't so know. <laughs> what are you gonna uh, do with the mule the mule Maybe you leave the mule on the far side of the the forty foot dune. Well, I was thinking maybe oh, come out. That's not gonna work. Hmm. So I just tried reloading roll twenty. It gave me error ten twenty three. Could not find host. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's an agility and a fortitude roll of yours just went through though. Yes, they did. Yeah. Yeah. It went through like right when I was reloading. So. Um, but yeah, no, I'm having, like, it's still having issues. Like, I just did a search for, uh, tokens to see if I had a donkey or mule token, and it's, so it's still having issues. They're probably having some fire shard issues or, or something going on, I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah, it's still lagging on the rolls from the character sheet, too. So we'll see. Um, between uh, just typing it and rolling or hand roll. And like I said, we'll, we'll just... We're getting... Well, we got 30 minutes till break. But we'll, we'll do Theater of the Mind until then and make it all work. Yeah, maybe um, uh, the, the boulder that... Uh, Talia is behind. How large is that? Uh, I mean, it takes up probably eight foot diameter or so by the looks of it. Um, so it's probably around it's probably around that tall. You know, it's somewhere between six and eight eight feet tall at its peak. Uh, would it be like 
since since we have time to set this up because we're we're waiting for them right uh talia would kind of just like leave the the donkey behind there and uh or the mule uh behind there and uh go to the other side and like walk around to see if you can see the mule from most angles well yeah that's part of the problem you're not sure where they're coming from um yeah she's she's essentially going to do her best to like as as she's you know checking on where we're setting everything up she's essentially going to be like going uh, uh, not draw i don't want to draw uh, she's going to be walking like around this way and uh just taking a look around basically anywhere from the southern region uh to see yeah so, like how it looks from their perspective if they're possibly coming up from that so if area. they're coming from the south or the southeast um this boulder over by brother richard is a little bit bigger so it might actually be better to to hide the mule right around there or since it's so much higher on this dune the problem being that you guys won't be able to see the mule but you could like um i forget who suggested it you could put them over and then on the downside of that dune uh it's sand so you're not sure if you could like securely tether the mule but yeah and also the mule could get hunted while we are hiding <laughs> yeah it's possible so this probably this one is your best bet okay if you're trying to hide it uh yeah do you uh, I think we talked about this before. Does Roach actually breathe air, or she doesn't? Well, eventually, yes, she would have to, but she can hold her breath for a really like inhumanly long time. Okay. All right. So, uh, and of course, you can use uh, Brother Richard or the Baron to. Uh, do one of your perception rolls to check on the approaching trackers. But who would like to do those? While you guys are resting and recuperating. I'm sure I'd be at least a little bit paranoid okay. about this. Yeah, and so you can use your, your snoopers to do that, which also give you night vision. Um, okay. So you're rolling uh, d20 plus uh, 6 d6, keeping two of those d6s. So you've got four advantage on the roll. All right. Uh, who else would like to check on the lovely approaching potential soldiers of the frog? I will also take a look. Okay. And does somebody want to do the third check, or do you want uh, the Baron or Brother Richard to do that? I can do it. Okay. All right, so Talia is able to spot them fairly well. So sorry, what's the... It's a D20. Um, for your character, Orion's perception is a two, so you're rolling a d6 in addition to the d20. Got 31, I exploded twice. Wow. <laughs> Cheater. Uh, so. 16. 16, all right. Now, um, I guess that leaves, uh... Time bust. If you'd like to roll uh, an exploding d6 mm -hmm. to see how how these guys are progressing towards you. Uh, result is a three. Three. Okay. Uh, 
All right, so, <clears throat> uh, yeah, you guys are moving along, and or not moving along, you're, you're watching along. You're able to keep track of them at various times, um, and we'll say, since you were the last one to roll, uh, Orion, you're, you're kind of on watch at the end, and it's actually been almost eight hours so you guys have gotten a decent amount of sleep and you can tell that they're they're getting close that you should probably start to get in position they're gonna be here soon we better uh into our shallow graves oh i am so nervous about this plan (laughs) all right so the the 17 from earlier still stands for your being buried as um, as these individuals approach, so you can hear hear the horses. Um, it sounds like they are being led, um, and you've got your hand sticking out, right, Roach? I think so. Uh, I was going to clarify: is there anything that we're putting in the middle of this ambush? Nothing, because if there isn't, then yes, it will be the hand. Oh, I guess I could put one of my extra books. And you were going to put some, you're, you were going to try and do the tracks and stuff, right, Talia? Yes, um, uh, we, we should definitely actually just all walk out of the, the, the area um, so it has all the same footprints. And then we should come back in from another direction um, uh, and try to cover those tracks. <clears throat> and you guys had already planned all this out because you have plenty of time for it. Uh, so why don't you roll something, Talia, for that? Um, I'd default, my thought would be agility for how well you do it, but you could use, I think logic, you know, to, to think it out and and do it right could make sense since you've got time and you're not pressed, um, or any other attributes that you think would be good for leaving the tracks and then disguising the tracks that you used. Um, well, I think logic is, is pretty much what she's using so i'm gonna go okay. ahead and use that let's see what happens 18 is pretty 18? good well that's good that it happened fast maybe it's uh nope i mean i haven't had any problems with my rolls knock on wood you cheater um you know i it can i have so many problems with technology can we just give me one day that i'm okay <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so you guys think that you've done your tracks pretty well. You feel pretty confident in how you've, you know, mathed it out in your head and seen it. Um, and yeah, these guys start to uh, come in with their horses. Uh, let me link these real quick. Oh, uh, well, that's not right. Oh, I know why. There we go. Okay, so... Yeah, there are... Oh, and when they get closer, you're able to see their numbers better um, as well, of course. So... It looks like there is a group of about eight of them all together uh, with with their horses uh, with them. There's uh, some double riding happening, so there's about uh, five horses. The Baron can take them all. <laughs> oh, yes, he's quite good. Um, and let me... Do a quick roll just to see if they're going to do something. Hey, that happened fast. Cool. Uh, So, of course, everybody's buried, so all you can do is hear the sounds of where they are uh, as they go. Um, So, when are you planning to pop out when they're around this hand when you feel them passing overhead hopefully when they see the hand they get off horseback but 
you know, if they're if they check out the hand and then just keep moving on, I think we'll have to ambush them at that point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, if they're walking and then suddenly everything goes quiet and they stop walking, that would probably also apply. Okay. Um, Orion, based on your position, I would like for you to either, for luck, roll an exploding d6 or your presence to see if any horses or people walk over your particular buried spot. Okay. Uh, what is my presence? Um, have you tried reloading uh, roll 20 yet? Uh, your Continuously, presence? yeah. Okay. I keep getting a uh, bad gateway. Yeah. Your presence is a one, so you're rolling a d4 in addition. Okay. Uh, 13. 13. Okay. Uh, let me check for them. Uh, they're pretty back focused. in. Do what? Oh, you're back in? Back in to roll 20, yep. Cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mine's wow. uh, loading as well. Okay. There we go. So, I think uh, you can tell that they've dismounted as they're walking through this valley part, um, as they're kind of looking around at, at the tracks and stuff. Um, so you hear them moving by. There are two that seem to stop right next to you, Orion. Uh, you kind of hear the footsteps kind of stop there. Uh, your, how do you have your hand? Do you have it like in walking position? Do you have it so that its fingers are up? Like there's something buried. How do you it's have doing it? different? It's doing different things when it understands that stuff's approaching. It's going to flip up onto its wrist and, and give it a middle finger and then give it another beck and like, come here, get some. Oh, so it's actually like moving and stuff. Okay. And then if the guy does approach it and try to touch it or do anything with it, it's going to run around at speed and just make it try to catch it. All right. So, <clears throat> yeah, Ryan, you feel like there are uh, there are two around you. As you uh, as you hear the footsteps stop. Uh, you hear the name of horses uh, a little bit further back. Um, I guess I'll draw since uh, Rule 20 is not letting me find tokens right now with the connection. Uh, so you'll get my amazing drawing skills here. Uh, for those of you that can even see it. Horse. Okay, so um, give me give me a perception, Orion, before anything else happens, which is a two for you, so a d6 you're rolling. Oh, hey, you're back in. Cool. Yeah, it works. All right, so an 18, you, you get the sense that they know you're there. Based on how they've stopped right around you. Okay. All right. Um. Uh, so I will do that. Let's go ahead and roll initiative here. Because, um, you know, stuff's clearly going on. Oh my goodness. I'm sorry, what was that? It won't let me click my token. Oh, that's not good. Oh, where's your token over here? Uh, you want me to click it for you? Oh, 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 hold on. I had the wrong thing selected. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay, so I think Perfect. that's all of you guys. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Is that everybody? Oh, do we not have... Orion. It didn't add me to the list, but I got it. Are 12. you it's... are you selecting your token before you roll? 
I'm clicking initiative on the character sheet because I, oh, I have okay. the initiative like hot button next to the you know bottom right, but it says no valid token was selected, so I'm not right. sure it's. So if you actually select the token for Orion, you'll notice at the very top left next to the pointer selector tool, there's an initiative button that pops up. Is that the like black zero? No. You might have the turn order might be over it. Okay. But it's it's right next to so you've got the uh, Yes, the turn it over is yeah. Okay. So yeah, if you click that button uh, that button only shows up when you have your token selected, so you can be sure that when you hit it, it will, uh, it, it'll work. So, but what was your original roll? Original was seven, or sorry, original was twelve, but I, I just went ahead and rolled a seven, okay. so I'll stick with that. No, we'll we'll change it back to the twelve. Okay. <clears throat> Goodness, as I inhale incorrectly there, um, I'm gonna make this a duplicate and put him over here because he'll be the turn order thing. Of course, it does that at turn. Uh, there's two groups, so I'm gonna divide them up twice. All right. So, oh, I guess I should roll that one. So they know I'm there, so I'm not getting you're, any surprise. Right? Yeah, you're. They're aware of you. You you okay. get that intuitiveness, but that means they don't have surprise on you either. So, um, seventeen. All right, descending. So the Baron gets to go first because he rolled stupid good on his initiative, of course. Um. All right. So. Um, yeah, the Baron, you know, he hears that they've stopped moving, so he's going to pop out of his, out of the sand. He's going to have to take half his movement to do that. And he's just going to charge right forward and start to attack this guy. Uh, he is, oops, that's not what I meant to hit. There we go. Um, he, <laughs> Wow. The Baron's rolling good for you guys this time. Um, wow, even with that impressive armor. Uh, all right, cool. Yeah, he just... You you hear a, ha-ha, on guard, and that swinging of a sword, some clashing, and then a, ugh, as, uh, as they fall down. You hear something crumbling into a heap on the ground. Wow. Okay, cool. Um, all right, so the first uh, group of soldiers, uh, they they yell out, um, oh boy, oh Ryan, oh boy. All right, so yeah, they shoot into the ground. You're prone, but then you also got sand on top of you. Uh, so, he's got his shield too. You know, I kind of imagine him like lying with the shield flat across his chest. Right. I mean, so yeah. you could definitely do like a defend interrupt too. But yeah, so they, uh, yeah, they're they're gonna use this one on you. Uh, so this one fires into the into the dirt. Oh wow! And this one does as well. Now these, um, well, if it will roll, uh, I think the cover you get from the sand and the disadvantage you have from being prone cancel each other out. Uh, so one shoots these little, uh, well, you can't see, so it doesn't matter. Uh, you, you feel, well, actually, what is your guard? 21. All right. So, uh, you, you hear like a pebble or something hit your shield but then you feel this heat and the heat is what kind of hurts a little bit so you take minimum damage as this uh stone fires out uh this guy is gonna turn and shoot at the baron uh, 
And I guess this guy's going to shoot at the hand. Because the hand's just weird. Does the Baron get hit? Actually, the Baron should have more health. Oh, wow. No, the Baron has pretty high guard. All right, so your uh, severed body part, Roach, is going to be shot at. Okay. Guard is a 17. Yeah. All right, so you take five damage. Um as this this pebble that's on fire seems to uh, hit. All right, and then that's all the guys down there, and it is your your hand's turn as it takes that damage. Wonderful. All right. Uh, can you show me which token was the one that? Uh, this one shot at you. Okay, and. Uh, the fire and the poisoned one went at Orion? Uh, yes. So okay. the ones with red are the ones that shot uh, the, the fire. Okay, cool. Uh, I don't think I can quite make it that far, but this one... Okay, that one does. Okay. All right. It's going to run over here, uh -huh. and then it's going to jump, jump. Uh, it's going to bound using all of its little appendages, and it's going to try a disarm and oh. steal this wand from this guy. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's a very oddly shaped wand, of course. It's, like, bent. Make sure I'm on the right. Sheet. Yes. Okay. All right. So it tries to jump on him. Um, yeah. this, this gleaming armor that they're wearing is very smooth. Looks like it might be hard to, to get through. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, did that work? Yeah, that does work. So you, um, disarm it. Uh, technically you're able to hold on to it if you want with uh, yeah, the power level you have access to. Going like that, and it's gonna try to run away at this point. But I don't think I have any movement left. Okay, yeah, you moved pretty far. Uh, you were somewhere around there. Yeah, that was about your movement. So you're like holding on to it with like three fingers and trying to walk on two fingers type thing. Okay. Yeah. I uh, the soldier cries out, "What? What? What in the world? This hand is moving." Um. All right. The other soldiers up top. <clears throat> Um, yeah, uh, I think they're going to hold their actions, uh, because there's a whole, whole big grouping of stuff going on. All right, uh, Glamis. Um, so, like. Do we just kind of get out of the ground for free, or no? Uh, well, it's half your movement to get up because you're prone. But yeah, you can just get out for free. Okay. <clears throat> um, trying to look. I guess the soldier kind of. How do you do the uh, thing where you? Ping a certain area again. You just hold, uh, click and hold. This soldier. Okay. Uh, can Glomus reach that? Uh, you can with disadvantage one. Do a charge attack that would let you reach there. Hmm. Otherwise, you only got 15, 15 feet of movement right now. After getting up. Okay. Um, I think Globus is going to get, uh, like, just going to use the 15 feet of movement to get closer to that soldier. Okay. Um, they don't really have uh, anything ranged, so... Right. Uh, I mean, if you just do the, if, well, like I said, you could go ahead and get an attack off. It would just be at disadvantage one and reach them. It's a type of, uh, focus action. 
But you can okay. also hold your action that if anybody gets close to you, you'll attack them. Yeah, I, I'll hold my action for now. All right, and then what's uh, Luthka going to do? Uh, I'm guessing same amount of distance. Right, yeah. You've got got to use 15 feet to get up, and then... And Orion, you're almost up, as well as Roach and Talia. Oh, wow, you guys are all at the bottom. Bam, bam, bam. Um, is it possible to activate the boots of the running warrior? Yeah, you can. Uh, you can just activate those. Okay. Uh, then yes. Because that gives you an extra. Uh, you didn't roll actually roll that. Um, let me look real quick. Yeah, because these uh, can do power level four. You just roll your alteration. Okay. Couldn't remember if we ended up giving those power level four would be what level. Okay, so yeah, you get, um, yeah, that's enough for power level four. So you get additional 15 feet of movement and plus one to your guard. Okay. And uh, I'll reposition Luthka to uh, stand side Globus. Because you could, you could actually reach that soldier now with that yeah, extra movement. Would I still have an attack? Yeah. Oh, your your okay. movement's increased enough that you could reach them. Yeah, but like I thought that the action would have taken that up. Oh, right, yeah. You used the action to activate the boots. Never yeah. Mind. Yeah. All right, no. Brother Richard uh, is going to pop out and kind of observe the situation. Um, oh, gosh, you're far away. Your hand is, anyways. That's not too bad, I guess. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and uh, he knows where you are as well. Let's see if he can. Oh, wow. Well, uh, yeah, he gives you. Wait, what did I just roll? Okay, yeah, he can't. He can reach. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, cool. But I rolled the wrong thing. Let's try that again. Oh yeah, that's better. All right, so you guys get bolster two uh, for Roach and for uh, Orion. So uh, Orion, I'm guessing you want that on might. Uh, yes, that's... Uh, and probably well. agility for Roach. So yeah, he, he stands up and he focuses his his divine energy, goes through the both of you. So you've got advantage two to those actions now. Now, Ryan, it is your turn. All right. I am going to uh, pop out of the sand, and as I do so, I'm going to hope that... Uh, well, first I'm going to try to use my, my shield to knock the um, wand out of the... Uh, I guess one of the, the one to the bottom right. Um, okay, yeah, the one the, to the left doesn't have one right now. Right. So I'm going to try a disarm attack. I'm going to hope that um, a golden dragon board popping out of the sand, along with, you know, uh, the, the shield knocking into his hand, is enough to uh, throw him off. Right. So... Twenty-six. Yeah, that is enough to. Uh, so you want to. Throw it like fifteen feet away. Actually, is it is this something where I can kind of knock it out of his hand and, and, and take it into mine? You need to have access to power level six, and I don't think your shield has disarmed as something okay. listed on it. So you can send it any direction fi uh, up to fifteen feet, basically, with your hit. Yeah, I'll try to uh, knock it just. I guess just behind me then, because I think uh, 15 feet in any other direction is going to be towards 
somebody that I won't have in it. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll kind of try to knock it 15 feet either to directly behind me or to the the back right. Yeah, that works. Okay, so that's uh, that's where you're not. He he yells out, shaking his hand, and looks angrily at you. Um. Yeah, and as you pop up and do that, this guy attempts to shoot you from above. You hear this little psh, psh, at ooh, uh, and uh. These tiny little things are flying right for your face. Um, these tiny little needles. Would you like to defend interrupt that or? Which one did I steal the one from? The one that's down below. This is the soldier up above on the dune. Oh. I am not going to defend and interrupt. I, I, I want to do something else for my next turn. Okay. So you feel these, these, little tiny needles stick into you and it it makes you start to feel nauseous and sick uh so you are sickened and stunned from this hit uh so stunned and is that in addition to the damage or is that in lieu of that is in addition yes Uh, and that's uh, all your turns. You're not going to want to move at all. I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah, because I'm expecting what two attacks of opportunity. I mean, maybe. Maybe okay. Yeah, no, I'll I'll stay in place right you now. Never know. Never know. Uh, so Roach, what are you wanting to do? I rise from the ground. You feel divine energy pouring through. Uh, you from which might might actually feel like dirty or something to you. I don't know. Yeah, it doesn't feel nice. It makes you feel kind of sick, really. Yeah, but, uh, but you do feel uh increase in your agileness. Agile. Yeah, it's like when you're hungry, you move faster. It's like that. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna actually draw the bow that's on my back that I have yet to Ooh. use, and I'm going to knock an arrow, and I'm going to loose at the. Uh, soldier that is uh, tangling with my hand. Okay. The one that you just stole from? Yeah. Gotcha. I'm going to try to get his attention. Let's see. This would apply to the lethal strike, I think. Yes, because ally is next to him. Mm -hmm. And then you got the extra from the brother. Then, of course, Talia, you're up next. All right. 19. So you fire this this wonderful shot and you watch as it hits the armor and just kind of shatters. Okay. Duck. Uh, yeah, you only got a 2 on the d20. Alright, so yeah, you've got you've got a bit of cover uh, going on there. Talia, what would you like to do? Okay, Talia is going to rise from the ground as well. Uh, and then she's just gonna just go ahead. I, I almost forgot. Roach and Talia need to roll their might to see if they're slowing down anymore. For a Roach, it's not gonna matter because you still get out and you didn't move afterwards. Uh, I don't think I'm actually going to be moving very much, but let's see. Okay, yeah, you you don't the the sand doesn't slow you down anymore, so you don't lose any additional movement. Okay, um, I'm going to first peek my head around because I don't know what's going on i've been buried right um and, and if, I, if you would like you can do a minor action perception to view the battlefield in more detail yes, please see if there's anything any extra tidbits i can offer you nope all righty so there's some sand um, in your eye yeah uh right in my eye oh gosh um oh Ryan is surrounded. He looks like he's holding his head a little bit. Oh, oh no. Um, okay. Uh, I'm going to uh, use my protection magic to cast restoration on him. Um, oh, nice. Because he he looks like he he might he might not be able to see very well. He's kind of kind of holding his face a little. 
Of course, I didn't put this one in there. Uh, so just a moment while I add it. No worries. See, see if this helps Orion a lot or not. Protection. Um, And Baron and the soldiers will be up next, but we'll go ahead and take a break at the end of this round. Um, I'm actually going to, I'm going to cancel this. I'm going to use a um, legend point to try to give myself Sounds good. a little bit of advantage right here. Actually, I should probably and double check that real quick. Oh, okay, 25? never mind. That, that definitely succeeds. Uh, so yeah, you, what, I guess we see some of the ribbons go out. What, what do we see? What yes, does Orion uh, feel? So Talia, um, she pokes her head around and she sees Orion looking bad and she says, oh no, not Orion. And she, uh, kind of concentrates a little bit, focuses, and you see the ribbons start to form around her hands and they shoot out from around the, um, the rock, uh, swirl through the air and then wrap its, itself around Orion and kind of cover him momentarily from head to toe uh, as it takes effect. Uh, and then it'll go ahead and dissipate. Uh, you won't see it anymore. So yeah, you, you feel that Orion, That's you see that. Move. And and you feel the, the needles that stuck into your face get pushed out as as your veins burn out the uh, the toxin that was causing it. So, yeah, we'll start with uh, whatever the Baron's doing here in about uh, 10 minutes as we go on break. Uh, be sure to visit the... Uh, Just wait, wait, what? hold on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wasn't done. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and then and then she, she hides back around. <laughs> okay. She actually goes kind of to the other side a little bit. Um, so that she's not right exactly in the same spot that she was when she poked her head out. Okay. But yes, that's it. <laughs> and and with that, we'll uh, we'll we'll go on break. But don't forget to visit the Discord. Uh, there's the link to it. I'll actually type that into chat in case anybody is not uh, visited our Discord yet. That link should uh, take you to an invite, so you can. Uh, Join some discussions over there. Find out lots of cool stuff from people knowledgeable in the Greyhawk setting. Uh, they've got lots of lots of friendly people over there. So feel free to check that out. And we'll be back here in about uh, about ten minutes or so.
All right. Oops. I should make that go away. All right. So we are back with City of the Gods in the middle of a fight. We've had one round go through. Um, the camera kind of zooms out, watches the Baron pop out of the sand, uh, pull out their rapier and do a quick move and just completely take out one of these soldiers. Uh, we watch some shots into the sand at uh, Orion beneath, and then a hand launches itself at uh, at a soldier, ripping the weapon out of their hand and gingerly holding it with thumb and index finger while other fingers attempt to balance in the sand. Uh, Talia courageously saves uh, Orion from being sick and stunned, and Roach fires the shot, but watches as the arrow shatters against the mighty armor that these guys appear to be wearing. Um, and Luthka and Glamis uh, get up and ready themselves for attack. So we start off with, uh, with Baron. I guess he will... Uh, he sees Glamis and Luthka to the south, so he's going to charge up to the north and attempt to dispatch that soldier. See if he's still rolling stupid good. Eh, 29 is pretty good. So that soldier takes some damage. Uh, and then it is the soldier's turn. So the soldier's down below. Hmm. They're both without their weapons right now around Orion. Um, they might not have that on them. So let me, let me see if uh, either one does. Okay. One of them, uh, there's this thing hanging at his hip. He grabs it out. It's like, uh, it's like the hilt or the handle to like a sword or something. And he presses a little button and this light just comes out of it. And it's just crackling energy um, as he tries to then take a swipe at you. Do they have lightsabers? Uh, no, that would be like, you know, that's that's probably copyrighted or trademarked. I, oh, I okay. doubt they have be, light swords. They might have plasma swords or something but cool um so yeah at least this one does uh so he's going to uh two-hand it and try and uh cut into you Ooh, hey i think that actually hits you yeah, yeah just, just hits me. So what happens is he swings at you, you see it coming, and at first you're like, is that real? But then you remember some of the crazy stuff that Talia does sometimes. So you have to strain yourself to get out of the way. It kind of tweaks a little muscle in your back, and you feel the, the pain from that uh, as your your stamina goes down a little bit from, uh, from avoiding that blow. Uh, the other one is going to try and get the weapon back from you, Roach. So they are going to do, uh, you know, a disarm of their own against you. Okay, now, before you say what actually ends up happening. Okay. I would like to invoke the perk of my severed body part, which is luck. Oh, all right. So, yeah, he goes, he's about to get a good hold of it. And, and then his footing just somehow slips in the sand and he drops to a knee and isn't able to grab on onto the weapon. And he, he gets back up angrily, cursing his, his misfortune as, as luck shines upon the severed hand. Yay! <laughs> All right, so that's those two. Uh, this one, uh, he's got that gun. Yeah, he's going to try and try and shoot at disadvantage against uh, against the Baron. So he's only got one. Ooh. Oh, no, that doesn't hit, because the Baron's got stupid magical armor and stuff. All right. Um, and then the Needler guy. Uh, he sees Luthka and Glamis. Uh, Luthka's bigger. He's going to shoot at Luthka. Ooh. 
Ooh, 35. So these two these two little needle darts are shot and heading right towards you, Luthka. Um, are you going to take that, or are you going to try and defend interrupt, or is Glamas going to try and defend interrupt for you? Um, I mean, if I have the option, I guess I'll defend interrupt, yeah. Okay. So you got to beat... Um, well, you don't have to beat 35. Anything above 15 you roll will increase your guard, so you take less damage. So, which role is it? Um, well, how how does Luthka defend herself? Does she alter the terrain to like make it temporarily throw a wall up against the needles? Does she just use her might to like bash it away? Uh, I mean, I guess yeah, like kind of swipe it out of the air with the arm. All right, yeah, go ahead and roll. That'll be all four of them. Might? Yeah, if you're swiping out there, might would make sense for that. Okay. So, mm. Roach's severed body part, you're up next. Oh, that's unfortunate. So, you attempt to swipe. Uh, you do not. So, that's 20 damage that you take. Twenty damage, you said. Yeah, because it's thirty-five versus your fifteen guard, right? Okay. Um, and you are sickened and stunned from as the the toxins uh, begin to go through your your system. How do I know it's up? Um... um, I just put it on your token. Okay. Uh, so the hand. What would the hand like to do? That is still holding on to this. It's much smaller than the one that Orion has, as far as... Uh, like, well, Orion. let's not get into sizes there. That's not <laughs> important at all. Uh, it's going to flop up onto its wrist and do like a little flourish and then use all of its tiny little might to use the wand. And it's actually going to not be shooting at the thing right in front of it. It's going to be shooting for the horse's... Interesting. Okay. Now those are, that's like a 15 foot rise. So I don't think you can see those two horses, but there are three over here. Those are, uh, yeah. I'm specifically trying, I was specifically trying for okay. these horses so that uh, the three guys up here would have to turn and attend to what's going on if they want to ride back. I guess, yeah, since you do tremor sense, you'd, you'd have an idea. So you'd kind of shoot. So this is going to be, just roll your agility. Okay. Uh, you will have disadvantage one because there is a person right next to you in melee. Okay. All right. Uh, in that case, I will use a legend point. Okay, cancel out that. Oh, this is my companion. Um, my companion does not have any legend points. Oh, well, I mean, you can give your companion a legend point. Let me uh, double check the stats on the uh, Wand of Poison Dreams. Uh, you do have one advantage from the weapon itself. Okay, all right, so that'll cancel out and I don't need to do anything else. All right. Yes! Wow. Okay, so, yeah, the you hear a, a neighing of a horse as, you know, these two two little needles shoot out from the, the tip of this wand and arc up and then land on this horse. Um, I have not been <laughs> keeping... Um, all right. We can theater the mind it. Yeah. Let's see if it's still not working, huh? Oh, oh, hey, horse token. Yay, we got a horse now. I mean, my drawing's clearly better, but we'll we'll go ahead and and use this token. All right. Uh, yeah. So that one is the one that's hit. All right, cool. Uh, did you want to attempt to move or anything like that? I did. I was going to actually start moving south towards the other three horses. And, uh, I imagine it's difficult, kind of difficult terrain for my hand, trying to carry something and move at the same time. Yeah, I, I think it, it would be difficult. Half speedish. Um, now, do you have like a flaw that r relates to that? 
No. Because, okay, yeah. So go ahead and, and move as where you're planning to move to. Limp that way. All right, so the soldier, he is just got his hands. He's going to try and take a swipe at you uh -huh. as you pass yeah. by him. If the sheet and Benny Hill in. plays in the background. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have any innate advantage to that. Oh, for wow. Christ's sake. <laughs> uh, cool. You know, getting a 13 on a D8. Uh, yeah, so... <laughs> Does uh, does the hand just fall flat there? Yep. Cool. <laughs> Eighteen damage. Yeah. So the hand tries to get past. It gets. Uh, he manages. He he kicks at you, and he manages to to kick you and and knock you the distance. And he definitely looks like he wants to grab uh, his gun from that. However, it is the soldiers up top on the ridge. Uh, do they care that their horse is hurt? <laughs> uh, you rolled pretty good on that, so I think it's just, uh, just see what's going on. Um, this guy kind of runs back over to the horse and is, uh, checking on him. He'll go ahead and attempt to, uh, comfort it a little bit from the damage it took <laughs> and the horse is not having any of it, it appears all right uh this one the hand's already down uh he's gonna shoot at you orion with the wand of firestone I am I'm rolling high on these guys after break. <laughs> so that's a 31 versus Orion. So that'd be 10 damage to you. Yeah, and uh, I think that knocks me to zero. Unless you want to do a defend. Well, I also have Die Hard, so it oh, knocks me Then you're only one. at one. Yeah. yeah. So you like... He smirks and then sees that you don't fall, and he mumbles and kicks the sand a little bit. Uh, Very injured, just I, but I have enough energy just to raise a middle finger. Let's see. This guy saw you shoot the uh, let's see, 10, 15, 20. He's gonna go for the uh oops. Uh so Talia and Orion, you probably hear a familiar sound as this soldier fires off what he's got. So that's uh twenty seven versus your guard. Where's my guard? No, 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 for Roach and for Brother Richard. As the familiar explosion like a fireball happens as something shoots out the tip of this guy's wand. Yeah, that hurt. I'm still up, though. Okay. Uh, did you take five or more damage? Oh, uh, yeah, I did. Okay, you have persistent damage, power level nine, which is pretty high. All right, um, and that's those soldiers. So, Glamis. Um, let's see. Uh, Glamis will try to charge this soldier. Excellent. I think that would be, yeah. No, oh, he forgot to move back. Well, that'll be his downfall. Um, let's see. I'll roll first and then move in case it goes horribly wrong. Right. Uh. Ooh. Mm. Three and a four. So Glamis tries to charge and hit into the soldier, but the even 
even the armor of the legs is really powerful and it just kind of bangs against it and the soldier just laughs mockingly hmm. uh anything else that glamis wants to do there um i mean that's the entire action and i don't think there's any uh okay so yeah you are currently stunned which means you only have one action that you can take. You can either do a major, a move, or a handful of minors. Uh, you can use your one the move. You can use it as a move action to resist the stunned and the uh, sickened, if you would like. Or you can attempt to just use your major and remain stunned. Uh, I don't really have anything long range. That's uh... so. I guess I'll make the move to kind of position myself uh, but just kind of uh, to the side of Gormas. So you can do that, but you'll remain stunned, which means the next round you'll still only have one action you can do. Oh. Um, now, if you successfully resist, you get your major and your minors back, which okay. means you could use your major to move if you wanted to. Uh, I'll try to resist. What kind of role is that? Uh, that's just so on your character sheet. If you look at the far right, uh, next below your health, there's resist rolls with advantage, normal, or disadvantage. So just be a normal, unless you have the feat that gives you advantage to those. Ooh, unfortunately, an eight is not enough unless you want to use a legend point to re-roll that. Uh, not particularly, no. Okay. So you are still uh, stunned and sickened. Mm -hmm. uh, Brother Richard did not like getting hit by that. Uh, and he's going to actually... Ooh, that's right. Oh, it exploded. All right. So he takes a little bit of damage there. Which uh, somebody else can be looking forward to here possibly shortly. But we'll see if Brother Richard can uh, get some restoration of his own going on. Uh, let's see. He could multi-target. Can he reach Luthka? I think Luthka might be out of range for... Well, especially for multi-targeting. Oh, yeah. 80 feet. So I'll try and uh, take care of himself and uh, Roach for right now. Okay, so you don't have to worry about taking that uh, that damage. Why did it mess that up? Anyways, um, he is going to minor action heal you and himself. Oops. And then, uh, Orion, you're up and then Roach, so be thinking about what you're going to do. Oh wow! Is that is that the heal for me? No, that that's uh, for the power level of the heal. Uh, so that was a seven. She just brought back to life at this point. <laughs> yeah, you're no longer a, a construct. Um, all right, so that's sixteen, but I'll let it add another one because it exploded so high. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you recover 23. I guess it doesn't matter for you. You were already at, uh, with, uh, with the 16, you were, that's your max. Uh, 23. So he's back at max. Nice. Uh, and then he's going to move. He, as, as he walks by you, 15 feet, he, he pats you on the shoulder re encouragingly, and you feel the, the magic uh, as your body reconstitutes a little bit faster. Oops, I don't want to move you. I want to move him. He needs to get closer so that he can heal people. So he's going to move out to there. Um, Orion, what would you like to do? I'm trying to remember. Do I have the medical pack or somebody else does? Oh, I, yes. I don't know who is holding on to the, the med kit. 
It would either be Talia or you, I think. I think Talia has it. Um, I'm going to do heal then, and I'm going to use a legend point for damage. Okay. So we kind of see your your eye f uh, flare up. <clears throat> Since you used a legend point, you can go ahead and do it at power level two, which is a d6 exploding. Oh wow! And you exploded on it. Awesome. And again, since you sent the spent the legend point, the plus one applies to it, so you get a uh, get eleven total back. Okay. All right. So he's looking a little bit better. Um, and I think at this point, I am going to use uh, my movement, and I'm going to move try to move uh, the max away from these guys. Um, so I will take attacks of opportunity. Well, one of them is holding a gun. Oh, no, actually, no, neither one of them are holding... Oh, one of them is holding the lightsaber. That's right. I mean, right. the plasma blade. <clears throat> the, the, the bright saber. <laughs> the bright saber. Uh, all right, so he's going to swing the uh, the plasma blade at you. The other one's going to swing his fists at you. Oh, no, the other one can't because he already did an attack of opportunity, I believe. Wow! Wow! <laughs> Stop! Uh, so you might want to use a legend point against my roll to maybe try and reduce it. Yes, <laughs> yes please. <laughs> so it exploded on both the D8, so you can have me re-roll, uh, you can re-roll a D8 for uh, the 22. <laughs> and that'd be a minus one since you're spending a legend point to do it. And I can roll it or you can roll it. Oh, well, why don't you roll it? Because you're rolling so great. <laughs> the baron roll it jesus yeah <laughs> uh so who's who's gonna spend a legend point tell you well are you sure you can you, you did can, it last time you can both spend a legend point and try and get both lo to be lower if you want to. i like that uh, i like that so yeah. in with wait so, so are you trying to roll a low number or because it'll replace so whatever point? you roll will replace the 22 for example so I can roll it if you want me to, or you I'll can roll do it. That. Okay, so D eight exploding D eight minus one. Same thing for for you, uh, Roach. Oh, very kind. Ooh, three. So that'd be a three. So that's better. Oh, and a four. So three and a four replace. Okay, so that's only a twenty four against you, Orion, instead of a fifty two. So, so both of you see this attack coming on Orion, and you just uh, your 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 guts are wrenching, and and the force of 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 your worry just seems to leap out towards this plasma blade as it swings, and it uh, is not nearly as effective as it could have been. I like to think some of the uh, leftover light from from my ribbons that faded into Orion kind of bursts out and and hits where contacts where the uh the light would hit him nice and in the back i'll do something akin to a vicious mockery and just be like don't miss <laughs> swing better 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 all right so you successfully get out of there with just uh, a slightly singed back and uh roach what are you gonna do so uh, brother richard came by and he gave me some good stuff and all have nodded like I'm showing appreciation, but as soon as he passes my line of sight and he can't see me anymore, I get this dark look in my eyes like I'm almost disappointed that he chose to spend his uh, stuff on me in that way. <laughs> because uh, what I'm going to do first is I would like to uh, uh, try to get out of this persistent damage business. Oh, he restored you for that. He did? Okay, cool. So I've got my movement back. I don't need to use that. Right. Uh, I would like to turn invisible. Okay. So you activate your your ring. Uh, no, my ring is the teleport ring. My oh, that's right. Ability is na is innate. is natural. Yeah. Yeah. So see if you can successfully invisible. 
Yeah, you need four more. You rolled a one. You could spend another legend point if you have it. Yeah, I think this would be worth it. Okay. I'm cool with that. So roll another Actually, D6. you know what? I'll, I'll use one of my legend points since you just used one for me. I've, I've got a couple left here. Mm-hmm. So do I. Up to you. All right. Uh, I'll use my own for now. You're you're in the forefront. You're going to need it more than more than me later on. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. All right. So what am I re-rolling? An exploding oh. D6. Okay. Loving the teamwork, though, guys. <sighs> so you're two-way. So would, would you like I a... I mean, it was better. Yeah. W- would you like a Devil's Bargain? I like those. Okay. So, since you're only only two away now from successfully activating uh, Invisible, uh, I'll let you gain the Invisible. Uh, and the strain, again, this, this act of straining yourself to accomplish things seems to be a theme. So, uh, the, the strain from forcing it to happen, you'll take uh, three lethal damage. Okay. All right. And yeah, so you still have your movement. Mm-hmm. I will Let's see the best route. Whoops. Whoops. There is no best route. All routes lead to death. Yeah, well, we'll see. I will get there. Okay. Uh, and I'm ha- go ahead. trying to hide, obviously. I'm trying, obviously, not to be... Oh, honest. yeah, go ahead and roll your agility. I mean, you're invisible to begin with, and there's crazy stuff going on. So... It's highly unlikely somebody will just notice. But you never know. I'm fine. Uh, so what, what are you doing there, Talia? I'm having a really hard time deciding, to be honest. There's so much I could do. And, it's true. Um, so, let's see. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to um, strike out at the, uh, I guess, one of the soldiers that are closer uh, we'll go towards that guy. Okay, there is a guy even closer. Uh, well, I, I was closer to Orion. Gotcha. Um, because he's my protector, but I'm protecting him too. Um, what uh, What is your score? You've got a score of six, right? Six. Uh, that Your max range is 50. Ah. So okay. you have to get 15 feet closer to strike at that guy. Okay, never mind. I'm going to go for this guy, and I'm just going to strike out with him uh, with my energy. Okay. Yeah, he's he's looking at the Baron, trying to bob and weave at the rapier uh, as as you fire off. Twenty uh, one. Twenty one does hit. It does awesome. uh, minimum damage, but it does hit. He, he cries out as these ribbons of light batter him. Okay. Um, uh, far? um and then Talia's going to start running over. Uh, no, she wants to stay under uh, around cover. So okay. she's actually going to stay where she is um, to try to get uh, really, she wants to try to squeeze in behind this boulder here and where the the dune is. Gotcha. Yeah. Go ahead and slip behind that as uh, he, uh, the Baron, like before you duck behind, he salutes at you as you, you struck the person he's fighting with. And then he proceeds to whip out his blade at the soldier. Trying to get past the armor. Oh, but this time the armor 
uh, he, he happens to shift and his glancing blow doesn't uh, is not as effective. Um, all right, it's all the soldiers' turns. There's only one of them down. Okay. Well, this one, since it's still there, um, is going to run up and pick up his gun, and then try and shoot Orion. Should have, should have stayed with his uh, plasma blade. Uh, all right, and this guy is going to run over to the downed body part and get his his needler out of it, and uh, he's going to look around. You find it, and it's curled up all except for its middle finger, like a dead spider. <laughs> yeah, he, he pries it free and then turns it around and attempts to shoot at Orion, because, I mean, this oversized lizard shouldn't be up but uh your armor easily absorbs the needles instead of letting them strike uh this one has a boar at its feet um hmm he's, he's actually got boar at his feet? yeah the hog is at his feet oh i thought you said he is he has boar at feet oh i'm like he's got boar at feet that's uh, this one's going to yell out to his friend. Oh, uh, power level three is a D eight. He, uh, he, he yells out his friend. He says, get back up, stay in the fight. Uh, the, the one that's been laying there from his wounds, he, he slowly blinks his eyes open. Uh, and uh, it looks like he might not be out of the fight anymore. But he is still prone on the ground. Um, oh, and that leaves this guy. So he's going to try and shoot point blank at... Oh, wow. He, he does minimum damage. Cool. Uh... Your severed hand, unfortunately, can't do anything, being unconscious. And so, Glamis and Luthka, you're going to be up next. The soldier's up here. This guy's going to try and calm the horse again. <laughs> but he is having a time of it. Um, did the, uh, it, since it's been a whole round, did the other horse run off? Or is it just chilling? Uh, these are somewhat trained horses, so I don't think so, but I'll go ahead and roll. I think it's still there. Um, it's, it's maybe moved, moved away a little bit, but. Just sidestep the whole thing. Just like, man, I don't like what's going on over there. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So this soldier is going to. Shoot. Ooh. Uh, yeah, that's against Glamis, so that'll be 13 damage, unless you want to try and stop it. Um, yeah, I'll try to stop that. Uh... What kind of attack is this? Um, it's a ranged attack, so it's an agility-like attack. It's a, a little pebble. It looks like a pebble that's on fire has shot out of this weapon and is going straight towards um, Glamis. Hmm. Now, if you don't do anything, it's just uh, 13 damage. If you do defend interrupt, that means you lose your major action when your turn comes up. Okay, I'll, I guess, wait, what, without a major action, I wouldn't be able to attack, I'm guessing? Correct. Okay, yeah, then I guess I'll take it. Okay. Uh, you, you hear that sound again as a large blast just hits Brother Richard. Uh, he didn't like seeing that healing happen. So, 
Brother Richard takes uh, another fireball, essentially. And that is their turn. Uh, so yeah, it's Glamis' turn now. Uh, Glamis will attempt to gore the soldier next to them. Oh yeah. Get uh, just just past the uh, the armor, kind of causing him to feel it. Uh, he he now looks like he's taking Glamis a little more seriously. Uh, what would Luthka like to do? Well, Luthka's uh, still stunned. Yeah, try to get out of that stun. Again. So. Uh, so yeah, just another D twenty, or just hitting the resist. Oh yeah, you uh, you get out. Excuse me. Uh, since these two are linked, you get out of both of them. Okay. So you are no longer stunned or sickened. So now you've got your major action and your minor actions back. Then I will walk on over to this soldier and uh, I forget, does do the um, Boots of the Running Warrior allow for multiple attacks per turn or? Uh... Not at power level four, they don't. Okay. I believe is what you have. I'll, I'll have to double check that because I apparently didn't write it in. Power level six, they you would have access to that. Okay. Um, um, but you'd have to roll high enough to get it. Right. Yeah. Then I'll just uh, try to claw at uh, the soldier. All right. As you're doing that, I'm going to take care of the persistent... Oh my gosh, I exploded on it again. Oh. You rolled nicely, too. Wow. Uh, that's... Oh, you... you how, how do you, What do you do to this guy? Because you, you take him out. Uh, I guess go right for the throat, the jugular, and all that. Yeah, he just... You, you got, Anybody nearby watches as it just collapses. Um, all right, he is going to rush forward over here. So you, you feel Brother Richard pass by you there, Roach. And uh, I guess he's the only one that's got that. But uh, he'll minor action, do some, some healing on uh, how many targets is he going to hit here? Uh, Luthka's low. Oh gosh. Hmm. Wow. There's actually a lot of you. Can he hit that many? Oh, wrong person. Uh, ooh, I think too far away. He can hit, he can get four, four targets. Eh, he doesn't need himself. He'll do three targets. He's doing good on his healing rolls. Uh, okay, so that is uh, the D10. Wow, he exploded on that. Uh, cool, so you guys can recover up to 25 HP for Luthka, Glamis, and Roach's severed hand. The hand is back, baby! So I think I think all of you are back up to max. Uh, then he's going to try and restore himself. Restoration himself. Which that he doesn't do as good of a job on. Uh, so he is still... Uh, still has that. Alright. Uh, Orion, and don't forget you have advantage too to might stuff. Oh, I do. Okay. Um, bolster. Yep. Does that only last one turn? No, he's still sustaining it. So okay. bro Brother Richard is maintaining it. Uh, so that you can benefit from that. Cool. So as long as he is up, you have it. Yeah, everybody else is just li little too close. So I am actually I am going to pull out the uh, the wand of sunflame and I'm Ooh. going to target the other gentleman with a wand of sunflame. Okay, yeah, he's up there yeah. feeling pretty confident. He sees you pull that out and goes <gasps> surprised. He temporarily compares the size of his gun to your gun and. <laughs> just briefly, yeah. Just, just briefly. All right, so you're hidden directly on him. Uh, yes. That deals 11 damage. So he is hurt. 
he yells out as the fire comes out around him, and he also has the uh, persistent damage. Thank you for the follow, Dink Beaches. Beaches are pretty dink. Uh, anything? Else? Did you want to move? Yeah. Um... Don't forget to mark off. Uh... Right. Yeah. That I've I've used one. Um... Yeah. I think I'm gonna move back here. Uh... I just gotta select. There we go. Yeah, move back here, kind of near uh, Roach and Brother Richard. Okay. Uh, and Roach. You also still have, he's still maintaining that bolster on your agility. Cool. Uh, is there anything, are there any unmanned weapons on the ground? No. Anymore. I mean, okay. I guess technically the body by Luthka uh, has one of the need, one of the I love that Okay. I, instead then I'm going to uh, book it. Run. Use my major action to continue running. Okay. I am going to attempt to make it all the way to the three horses over here. Oh, okay. Now, if you want, you can do the charge action, which is a type of focus act. Ooh, except you wouldn't be able to maintain your invisibility if you did that. So you probably don't want to do that. But if you wanted to, you can move that distance and get an attack with disadvantage one off. But it means you couldn't. You wouldn't. Ha you sacrifice your minor actions to do it. Um, my intent was to eventually get here, and then I'm figuring this will probably take next round. Okay. But I was going to actually grab the reins of the two horses behind, jump on the third one, and okay. then proceed to use them. Gotcha. She's stealing horses right now. I'm not trying to kill him. <laughs> Understood. All right, so Talia, it's your turn. The Clown Slayer has followed. <laughs> Thank you, Clown Slayer. Um, Talia is uh, pretty annoyed that this other guy got up. Uh, so how far is that? That is too far. Um, she is going to move around here um and actually actually no she's not going to move around there oh. she's just going to poke her head out and uh shoot some more energy towards that guy excellent the uh, the baron's be beeping and bobbing what the heck bobbing and weaving <laughs> Doing a few fake thrusts at the sky, keeping them occupied as you uh, unfortunately don't quite uh, connect. The The armor seems very impressive at resisting your ribbons of energy. Okay. And you duck back behind. Yep. Okay. All right, yeah, the Baron's going to do what he does usually sometimes well. Uh, I guess uh, he's not doing so well anymore. Wow, three sixes. He said something. All right, another one's down. Um, this guy's going to turn to Brother Richard and attempt to take him out. The Firestone uh, does not hit. It bounces off of Brother Richard's armor. Uh, he probably doesn't notice the hand is up yet. He sees Luthka. He's going to try and move away from all that. Uh, so technically, the hand would have an attack of opportunity. However, it is technically prone, so it would have disadvantage one to that attack of opportunity. It just goes, eh. <laughs> uh, I don't think it even has a weapon. Does that matter? Does oh, I imagine it just uses its fingers or its hand. To... Okay. It's like a claw attack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yep. that doesn't hit you, does it, Orion? 19. Uh, yeah, the severed hand kind of rakes, but it doesn't quite hit. Uh, yeah, so now it is actually the hand's turn. Uh, 
Uh, right. It is going to do that thing again. Wait. If it's kind of like this. Yeah, I can still make it. Get there. And then uh, go for that one's wand again. Try and disarm. Try and disarm. Okay. Are you hoping they're closer together there, Orion? A little bit. Uh, that one also has the uh, laser sword. Is that the one with the laser? No, I think the... Oh, yeah, yeah. So you're telling Casey that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's got think... he's got the laser sword and the the fire rock. Going to go with the, the, the ranged thing, because okay. I think that the laser sword might be unwieldy for a single <laughs> hand, but nobody to wield it. Yeah, Luke couldn't do it that well when he lost the hand. Right. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> too soon? Is nineteen eighty too soon? Oh, fifteen was your roll. Thir no, fifteen is not high enough, unfortunately. Um. All right, the guys up here. Oh, roll. Oh, that, the the fifteen from before was the oh the opportunity uh, attack. Gotcha. And twenty five that I just rolled is the one for Does. disarm. Yeah. So you do you get the he. Yelps in surprise as you le the hand leaps up and snatches the gun right out of his hand. Cool. And he shakes his fists angrily at you. Shakes back. Um. All right. And then it's the well. If you still have movement, I guess you could move. But I had uh, to stand up, so I was that's thinking true. that used half. All right, so Orion, roll an exploding 2d6 for the uh, f additional flame damage from that fireball that hit the soldier. Oh. <laughs> he, he looks like he is, he is just barely managing to still be standing. Um, he can't be outdone. He was getting ready to put it away since he's already shot it twice, but... You're just too tempting standing next to Brother Richard. Whew. 36 means you take 15 damage on that. I think Brother Richard does not want to get hit again, considering he's already... Got the precision damage. He's going to try and uh, form a, a holy shield. Oh. So you only take six damage from that attack. <laughs> but that is his major action, which means he will not have uh, one next turn. Um, and then the soldier is going to try and pat out the flames. And he does. And then this one is going to shoot Luthka. And the other one's going to try once again to calm down the horse. Finally. Finally gets the horse under control and calm down. And uh, Glamis, you are up. Um, I guess this charge chats a uh, soldier to the upper uh, left. Okay. So, uh, did he get back up yet? Yeah, he's already had a round, I think. Well, if he's back up, I'm trying to knock him back down. Right. Actually, I don't think he has had... Uh, are he... Yeah, I forgot, probably. Uh, 17 doesn't quite hit. Okay. So you, you bang against him. Uh, but then it's Luthka's turn. Uh... Lufka does a similar action. Runs into the, the soldier. His eyes go wide as he sees the... With claws forward. Uh, 
Ooh. Mm. You you go to swipe. Um, you you want a devil's bargain? I don't know. That's where I'll let you deal damage to this guy, but something happens to you as well. You can you can always refuse it. You don't have to say yes until you hear what it is. Uh, let me hear it. So, uh, incidentally, three is all that he has, so you'll take him out. But uh, as a result, you kind of uh, strain yourself, so you'll take uh, three lethal damage. As you, like, tear a, a tendon in your arm or something. Yeah, I can live with that. Okay. So you, you manage to take this guy out, but as a result, uh, yeah, you have three lethal damage, so you'll have to spend, uh, spend the rest time attempting to recover that. But he is taken right. out. Uh, Brother Richard, he doesn't have a major action, but luckily he can minor action heal. Oops. Oh, and he actually takes damage because he hasn't gotten rid of the fire. Well, at least it doesn't explode this time. Um, all right, so he's going to attempt to resist his move, which he does. And then... Uh, he yells, Orion, stay in that fight. And he is going to send out his healing energies towards you. Oh, actually, it just automatically succeeds since he's only targeting one person. I guess he'll target himself too. That'd be smart. Oh, man, he is going crazy on these heals. Um... So that's 13 uh, that you'd recover. Thanks, Brother Richard. And it is your turn, Orion. All right. The, um, the other guy with the pistol looks like he's barely standing on his own two feet. Uh, let me check distance on one thing here. So it's... 25 feet between those two guys. I'm going to target um, this guy here. The um, yeah, one with the, the purple dot. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try to do the large wand of some flame. Okay, so yeah, you can make the area hit cover, cover all that. Two ones. That's rough. Yeah. That's rough. Unless you want to spend a legend point. Yeah, might as well, right? All right, roll a roll a d8. And you'll get to add that to the total. Which means for sure you do at least minimum damage to each. <laughs> so, you do minimum damage to each. At, at least, yeah. Uh, now, does it also target the guy on the ridge, or is it because of the height? No, because it's, it's a 25-foot square. It's not uh, the radius. So that's the diameter, really. Gotcha. So I just pretended you shot here and made it hit both because that's what your intent was. So yeah, you managed to hit those two uh, in a way that doesn't. Well, not my hit my you. intent was to actually target this the guy right um, this guy right here. Yeah, but you wanted so to hit you wanted to hit both him and this guy, right? Right, and he's yeah he's within that twenty five feet. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Same page. And uh, yeah, if you wanted to move, you still have movement. Um, I guess, Roach, roll your presence for dealing with these horses. Sure thing. And then, Talia, you're up next. Ooh. These horses do not like being grabbed by invisible things. So, you're trying to grab the reins and jump on one of them, right? Yeah, what's actually happening is, uh, mind you, I only have one hand. Right. I uh, take the one on the left. I'm going to try to take the one on the left's reins, take the one on the right's reins, have them both in one hand, and then loop both of those around the saddle horn of the front one. And that was the intent. And then I was going to jump on the front one. Yeah, you're you're trying to get up, but the horses are are like moving around because they can hear the movement. They can maybe even smell it a little bit, but they can't see what's going on. So you're you're having a little bit of trouble. Um, 
it'll take your whole round to get on the horse, basically. Uh, and you'll have to roll again to see if you can make the horse do what you want it to do. Okay. Uh, next round. But yeah, well, at, basically at the end of this round, you are able to get on it uncomfortably so, but it is not responding to you yet. Okay. Uh, Talia, what would you like to do? Talia's going to peek her head around and say, you got this, Baron? And uh, she shoots out some more ribbons of gold and sunlight uh, to surround the Baron and um, is going to give him resistance. Oh, nice. Uh, oh, very nice. Four. Yeah. So his defense Plus score six. is attacked by six. Very good. Yeah. He, uh, yeah, he, he yells at hip hip and with renewed vigor attempts to. Hey, there we go. Good. All right. He, oh. It's rolling twice for me. Uh, so he's got movement still. He's going to, I guess, charge this way. It's right next to you, Baron. Uh, Orion. He is Baron. <laughs> All right. There's not much of the ground guys left. There's still two of them. Um, yeah, he, he pulls out his plasma sword again and attempts to... <laughs> slice the hand. So, uh, unless you want to do a defend interrupt, I think uh, I think your hand is down again. I don't think even a defend interrupt could do much. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's still trying to get you, Orion. This guy does not have good aim. Cool. Uh, the hand is down. Soldiers on top. Um, okay, yeah, he, he has to put away his gun, um, and Orion, you see him running, uh, out of view, because of the dunes higher, uh, southward, um, this guy's going to try and get a shot off at Orion because they're mean like that. So he takes a, a pot shot at you and then he also seems to be running to the south. What would Glamis and Luthga like to do? Um, my guess is that they would go for the uh, soldier right next to uh, Roach's hand. Okay. Uh, let's charge attack. Man, those rolls. Hmm. The dice do not like you today. Nope. You've taken all the good ones for our enemies. <laughs> it seems like it. Yeah, and you guys can hear uh, horses neighing a little. Ooh, wow, horses neighing a little bit uh, to the southeast, as if they are being mounted uh, to ride. Thirty-five. That that takes him out. He only had fifteen left. Another swift. Strike up the throws. Yeah, this guy's looking nervous now. Um, all right, brother Richard. Who's hurt the most? Uh, just himself and Orion. So he will. Let's see about. Ooh, wow, he didn't roll that great. Uh, that's still healing, but that'll be. 
Uh, only that much. So you recover seven, Orion. Uh, okay. Oh, he's got a major action too. Um, he'll get here. Uh, to get up the dune, yeah, he gets... I guess he's able to reach the very top uh, as he uses his, his major to move as well. Uh, cool. All right, your turn. And then Roach and Talia. Oh. I want to um, stow the Wand of Sunflame, mm -hmm. um, and I want to at least move here and grab the um, Plasma Blade off of this guy. Okay. Yeah, you pick up the... the oh, Roach's severed body part. Uh, Roach recovers... Your body part recovers seven, too, because he can target up to three people. Thank you. Is that a major action, picking that up? No, that'd be uh, a minor to pick it up. Okay. Uh, so that? That was and then, yeah, I want to see if I can move here and uh, do a melee attack with the plasma blade. Were you there? Yeah, you can I was, be there. Yeah. All right, yeah, go ahead. Is that uh might roll or just do uh, a... I, I have a, I have I a sword attack, but I can do that. It might be both uh, versatile and forceful, but let me look real quick because I didn't happen to note that down. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, if you want to roll your presence to get the horses to listen to you, you can go ahead and do that while I look this up real quick. Um, I think it counts as a longsword, which is forceful and precise. So yeah, you can use uh, either one. Yeah, because that's how he used it too. He double-handed it. So yeah, it's basically a longsword. Okay. And so you got the two advantage from bolster. That's right. Brother Richard has been keeping that up. Thanks for that reminder. And <laughs> okay. Wow. Wow. Yeah. One, two, two, five, five. That is. Two. Yeah. Whew, that is rough. You're not quite used to wielding this. Uh, as you, you pull it back, it gets close to your face and you feel the heat from the blade and it kind of messes up your swing as you go. However, uh, Roach, you're able to get the the horse under control. Um, oh, thank goodness. Uh, you can probably move um, 40 feet, we'll say. 40 feet. All right. Me and all three are going to... Uh, yeah, we're going to get around there. Okay. I'm headed towards the Baron. Gotcha. We'll, we'll let those replace my, I mean, amazing drawings that would win rewar awards, but uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and remove those for now. Uh, Talia, what would you like to do? Okay. So I have a question. Did she, uh, did this guy look like, he, uh, did he pull out one of the wands? Yeah, he has one of the wands is laying nearby his body on the floor. Okay. Talia is going over to him, and she's going to grab one of uh, grab the wand that is is on the floor, and she's going to attempt to shoot this soldier with it. Okay, so roll your agility. This one is not like the uh, the sunflame one. This one requires a little bit of precise aiming. Nope. Two and she, a one. Yeah, she she picks it up and she she starts pointing, but she is visibly shaking. Yeah. And uh, it, it hits the ground probably about five feet from him um, as, as she shoots it out. And I could be mean and make you hit Orion. Gonna say she's just yeah. thankful that she didn't hit Orion. <laughs> yeah, this one uh, makes some noise and it kind of startles you too. And yeah, there's a she almost drops it. Yeah, there's a poof of of sand 
uh, right next to you, Orion, as uh, a shot. You, maybe there's an enemy behind you, and then you look and see a shaking uh, Talia. Deep, deep breaths. Deep breaths. Uh, Baron runs up beside you. Ha-ha! You should make more thrusty motions like this! And, uh... Well, we'll see if he eats his words. <laughs> okay, 24. Yeah, he hits. Uh, the, the guy also looks uh, like he wants to run right now. And it is his turn. He, um, <laughs> well, let's see how, we'll see how under control he is, uh, of himself real quick. Not very. He, he is going to just toss the gun in your face, Orion. Is that does that beat your guard? That is my guard. <laughs> so he he bruises your nose a little bit with the gun as he panically throws it at you and then starts to try and run up uh, the dune, which he's uh, let's see that's fifteen feet. He's going to get part way up the dune. Does that give? Yeah, me that and the gives. Baron? That actually gives both of you attacks. Well, I'll let you go first. Okay. Oh, and remember, you do have advantage one from the plasma blade itself. Oh, okay. Uh, so that's three total with the bolster. Right. Twenty nine. So that's oh, he's still, still up. Let's see if uh, together with the Baron you can both finish him off. Oh, yep. Just enough minimum damage. So as he tries to flee, he falls to the ground at your feet. Um, all right. Severed hand is back up, so it's actually you can do something. Uh, does it still have the wand in, in its grasp? It does, yes. Because he has... Yeah, it's the fire pebble one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it is the fire one. Oh, boy. All right, it's gonna it's gonna try aiming and shooting it at uh, the the ones that are trying to get away. Okay, yeah, you've got some. Tr roll your perception because it is tremor sense, and uh, just to see if you can accurately determine where they are. Nope. You, That's you, okay. It can be got, like suppressive fire. You've got a rough idea. It's uh, disadvantage two because you can't. You don't quite know where they are. You sort of do. Okay. Um, so yeah, just roll your agility. Uh, the gun inherently gives you one advantage, so it's just disadvantage one. All right, you got it. Yeah, you 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 end up hitting the boulder. Brother okay. Richard calls back. Uh, you need to aim a little higher. Uh, <laughs> the the hand is just shaking its self at him. Uh, can I move? Oh yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so the hand's going to start crawling back towards its owner. Okay. Yeah, it'll, it'll make it. Um, this guy is going to run and jump on the horse with this guy. They're going to take off 40 feet, which I think is right at the edge. Yep. This guy just finished getting this horse calmed down. Whoop. Not right click, left click. And he is also going to get about 40 feet. So they are, Brother Richard says, they're they're running away. Uh, Glamis and Luthka, what would you guys like to do? Um, I don't really see anything to attack. Like, in yeah, the they're the only the only ones that are still alive are the ones that are fleeing on their horses right now. So unless you guys actively pursue them, they'll basically get away. Um, I don't think Luska uh, is particularly interested in pursuing these ones in particular because okay. they haven't been like, setting fire to trees. Or right. Something. Man, those 
those people who set fire to trees. Yeah. Not as bad as the people who walk through moss. That's, you know, at least there's that. <laughs> so that's the question right here, because we can basically end in combat unless some of you with uh, ranged weapons want to continue to shoot at these guys as they flee. Probably What's up with the one that's still in the hill? Sorry, go ahead. They doesn't have any particular bloodlust. Sure. Uh, there's the only ones are are down here that are still. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I see the one right by where it says fifteen feet. Is that one? Oh, that's Brother Richard. Oh, that is. That is. Never mind. Yeah. Which don't Brother... shoot at that guy. Put, uh, don't shoot at him. Brother Richard can actually hit one of them. Actually, I think he can hit all of them if he wanted to. But yeah, do, do you guys have any plan to, or are we just going to go ahead and cut it there? I think if Brother Richard wants to try to hit him, otherwise... Uh... He might, uh, to maybe try and question one of them, since basically all these have been <laughs> pretty, pretty cut into. I don't think there's going to be anything. Let's see if he can... Oh, actually, no, he doesn't have a uh, ranged attack ability with his uh, his particular magical abilities so no he can't so is it possible for me to get up the hill yeah it's just uh it'll take a i mean do you have climbing feet or anything like that or i don't because yeah then it'll it's it's a little bit more difficult terrain if you roll your might and you're able to climb effectively uh then then you'll be able to let's see where are you yeah, if you if you roll really good on your might, you can get to the top in just a move action. Okay, yeah, you you just reach the edge of the moon, so the moon, the the dune, so that your waist and higher is up above, so that you can in fact, uh, you know, see them. So you're like right okay. here. I think in that case, uh, I am going to take one final shot at the uh, the grouping of the two guys. Yeah, right there, and uh, okay. I'm going to. Uh, just use the regular shot. And just hit the, the two. Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Let's see if it happens. That definitely hits. Um, I think... Let's see. That one... That guy's still going to be okay in theory... That guy, the the one guy gets blasted off. The one that had the other gun like yours. Yeah. And he, he yells for a second on fire and then collapses. I think you get the horse. I don't think the horse the horse falls, uh, which means the rider falls. Go ahead and roll an exploding 2d6 for the persistent damage. Um, yeah, so... Uh, this guy is, if somebody comes and puts out the fire, he'll survive. But otherwise, if he is on fire one more round, he'll die. And this guy will run away. Do you want to put out his fire? I do not. No, okay. we'll, we'll leave, we'll leave one to tell the story and otherwise we have, uh, two more guns. Okay, so yeah, that's uh, going to be the end of the session because we're right at uh, right at stopping time. But there's a couple things want to cover, and we've got a little bit of leeway because uh, the next next show does not start for an hour. So first of all, um, and we'll talk about at the start of next session rewards um, and stuff like that uh, as far as the loot, but. We're going to, well, first of all, legend points. So did anybody invoke any of their flaws in a way that complicated the situation or uh, made things harder? I was without a hand for some time. That was weird. For it was weird. a while. Yeah. I don't know that it... Uh... Yeah, because it could be seen as a benefit, too. On the other hand. Right, yeah, because it didn't uh, adversely affect any any of the things you were trying to do. 
Well, it could have with the saddles and the whatnot. That's what I was ready for it to interrupt. But we just played it off as a bad roll. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, you guys did a good job working together and kind of uh, planning out everything. So everybody go ahead and mark down a legend point. Uh, would anybody like to recommend anybody for uh, a particular moment during the game? Um, when Orion was uh, facing, he, he was practically getting surrounded, um, and he just kind of kept going. <laughs> that was pretty wonderful. Yeah. I, I quite enjoyed so go ahead and mark down a legend point there, Orion. And uh, while I'm being mentioned, I would like to very much uh, recommend both PC and Eris as players for fighting over offering uh, legend points. That's uh, <laughs> very much appreciated. Yeah. Why not both? <laughs> well, yeah, why that, not both? That would have been a big hit otherwise, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, all it right. Makes a player feel all warm inside. So this is our, our fifth episode, and I meant to do it in an episode earlier, too. But then I forgot. So mark down. Um, I think after this fight, uh, you're learning more about the world and stuff. So mark down a total of two XP on your sheet. And then we're going to talk a little bit about what that means. And I'll bring out Brother Richard's sheet so that other people can see. Uh, but so just where it says XP, just uh, add two to whatever it is, which right now I think you guys are at six XP. So now you're at eight. Okay, so what that does is with two XP, each XP gives you three attribute points and one feet point. So now you guys have six more attribute points you can spend and two feet points. Now you might want to save up for three feet points to buy a three feet, uh, three, three feet point feet. That's, that's, that yes, that's good. Yeah. So no, uh, say that three times fast. Yeah. So this is where, you know, kind of planning and thinking about uh, what you want to do with your character. Uh, for your next next going forward. Right now you guys are at level 3. Um, it won't be until level 5 that you can get an attribute of uh, 7. So right now your max attribute is a 6 that you can have. So you can look at your feet points. And actually you guys have gotten 6. So any 5s you have, you could bump up to a 6. Because that's the cost, right? Uh, to get from a 5 to whatever the attribute score you want, that's how much it costs. Uh, to get there, right? So from a five to a six is six points. From a four to a five is five points. Um, so kind of thinking about what what has been working well for you, uh, what is your character leaning more towards doing, and maybe look at increasing uh, those attributes. Um, maybe thematically, like maybe you, you feel some swelling in Orion's throat and maybe his ability to do his flame, which is your energy stat, maybe that goes up some as a result, right? And then looking uh, at your feats is something to, to do as well. Uh, do you have a two-point feat that you want to buy right now? Or uh, do you want to save up for that three to get, like for Roach, get Lethal Strike uh, bumped up another level uh, versus grabbing something like climbing or something like combat momentum you know so there's there's all those things to to consider and think about where do you see your your character going basically is anybody and you don't have you can think about it right uh, until next session but is there uh, any any thoughts that somebody has about where they see their their character going. I've already actually started putting points in. That's good. You you can do that. Yeah. yeah um, I'm I, too. Yeah, I, I put another in agility and um, one more in perception. Um, because I thought that was pretty uh, so something that she's actually been using more and more um, as she goes along so it feels feels right for her to kind of be developing those skills a little bit more right uh, that's it for me for now um, i think she'll probably want to increase her fortitude um maybe next time i add four 
points in, I'll probably increase that a little bit. Um, sure. Slightly more hardy from traveling in the desert. But other than that, she's uh, she's using she's using the same skills that she's always used. Uh, something else to think about if uh, if your character has been doing something particular in the game, uh, you can always talk to me. Hey, do you think that this perk now applies to you know? Sometimes we'll award perks. Sometimes you might lose a flaw, or some and gain a new flaw, right? So that's always things that can happen for the short run that we're doing. That might not happen, but that's something to think about if you're like, hey. With what my character's been doing, I'm thinking maybe this fits better for them. And you know, feel feel free to talk to me about that. And we'll we'll talk about that at the start of the next session, as well as um, some of the loot that you guys are going to find off these soldiers. Uh, so speaking about next session, uh, we will be without Eris, right? Yes, I so. have to be in my office job for a couple weeks. So unfortunately, she won't be here. Uh, we'll still have our regular session next week, and then on the sixteenth, uh, we're actually going to do a one shot so that Eris doesn't end up missing uh, too many sessions of it. So, uh, so we'll be without her, but her character will still be there. I'll see if, like with session number one, I can bumble through as her character in RP when applicable. Uh, and we'll see what happens. Yeah, she's just, she's intensely investigating all of the new items that we find on these bodies. She's and there's some interesting really, ones. She's she's basically going to be spending all of her time just closely looking at them, especially with the surprise she got with that one wand. She's just going to be taking a look at them, and so don't bother her. She's she's busy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and I think we, we see maybe as Orion walks over to the body and he picks up the other, he kind of compares the sizes of the two real quick, see which, you know. You're yeah, I, I, I'm considering maybe uh, maybe maybe dual wielding. At, uh, yeah, he's also, he's playing with the uh, the plasma sword but, and like making lightsaber noises, even mm. though it also mm. makes the noise itself. Right, yep. Um, all right, so yeah, we'll we'll do some shout outs here. Uh, for for everybody, so we'll start we'll start with you there, Derek, as you make lightsaber sword noises. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hi everyone. I am Derek Sword. I am D Sword One Six on Twitter. Uh, you can find me there where I post about uh, RPGs, dogs, travel, lots of fun stuff. Um, I don't have anything necessarily to promote myself, but I always like to take this time uh, to promote uh, small creators, especially like the ones we have on this show, especially like the ones we have on this channel. They're amazing. They make amazing things um, that are made with love and care, and you will never be sorry for shopping with any of them. Um, and, uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you guys next week. All right. Casey. I am Casey, Casey H on social media. Today I've been Roach, your resident Necro Ninja. If you would like to catch me elsewhere, uh, later tonight, starting at 9 p.m. EST, I am on the Cretuitous RP channel, uh, playing The World of Horan. And then on Fridays at 5 p.m., I'm back here on the Greyhawk channel doing The Old Faith. And then on Sundays, 6 p.m. EST, is Half Raid Heroes back on the Cretuitous RP channel. Awesome, awesome. And Time Bust. I think you're muted. Hi, uh, name's Belial. Like uh, you can follow me on Twitter and otherwise at Timebust. And otherwise, I don't really have anything to promote at the moment. Very cool. And then Eris. Hello, I am Eris Savad. I am a hula hooping seamstress who plays a lot of games. Um, Currently, this is the only show that I'm on. Uh, however, if you want to check out the, all the cool stuff that I make, you can go to my website, erisavad.com, exactly kind of how it's spelled right down there um, without the underscore. Uh, and uh, I've got a bunch of stuff in my pre-made store now, so you can actually buy stuff right now. Um, and yeah, I'm putting hula hoop videos on Twitter today, so... You can just check that out and follow me on Twitter at Eris underscore Savad, just like it says it right there. And yeah, yep, that's it. 
And I am Great Mustache, uh, as you can see below my name there, Great underscore Mustache on Twitter. I'm also on Twitch at the Great Mustache, uh, no spaces or underscores, uh, where I do stream a few other games of Open Legend. I do a lot of Open Legend stuff, so uh, you can check that out. I even do a few videos of like encounter building and stuff using Open Legend to show you how to how to do some stuff every now and then. So uh, feel free to come check that out. Thanks for coming by and watching City of the Gods. We've got actually I'll post the uh, oh mm, let's see if I do that. Well, that switched all the cameras, but it does have the schedule and we just had uh someone follow us but i unfortunately didn't see the name so yeah we have a show after us here in about one hour um called savage tides and then there's a show at 8 p.m so you can see lots of shows on the schedule uh if you want to see the summer schedule it'll uh you can see it on the Greyhawk channel twitch as well as um, it's on the screen when when no shows are going on so lots of cool shows make sure to come by and check out um, the discord uh, and chat with people there lots of wealth of information there lots of people willing to if you have any questions about the Greyhawk setting uh, there's people who know so much it's crazy so Definitely stop by, chat. Everybody's really friendly over there, very welcoming, uh, even if you don't know anything about the Greyhawk setting at all. So it's been fun, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye.